All right, welcome back. So today we're doing something pretty exciting. We're going to do UDP network programming again, but this time we're going to be using FLTK and we're going to be use FLTK's internal or you know Python FLTK's internal uh, event loop in order to do, do asynchronous network communication. In other words, we can send and receive at the same time. We don't need to have separate threads because we're going to be utilizing the FLTK event loop thread. So we're actually going to be keeping an eye on sockets, very similar to the way I think select works, but we don't need, we, all we need is simple sockets for this. So the code here uh, is on the left, and you can see we're just importing socket and sys and FLTK. <coughs> now, uh, before I kind of go through the description of the code, perhaps it'd be better if we just demonstrate the program. Okay, so if you look on the left-hand side, it has a usage comment here. So we're going to go Python, and we're using P for Python 3, it's an alias, and so there's our program name, I know it's quite long, chat server client GUI UDP. Now the reason I've done that, by the way, is because I'm actually, I actually have only one source file for both the server and the client. Because in UDP they're very similar. Okay, so UDP is connection less, there's no connection, so every time we send uh, packets we're going to have to specify where they're going, we can't have a connection, so really the, the only difference uh, between the server and the client is, well, the bind is different for sure. And we'll see if we have any other if statements going down, and that's it. So I mean, you know, why have two programs just to have one line that's different? So therefore, I said, hey, let's just use the same source code, but let's specify in, on the command whether it's a client or a server. So at the top here, let's start the server first. So after the program name comes whether it's a client or server, so let's type in server here. And then the next one is the IP, and I'm going to run this on localhost again. And why not? Let's pick port 5555. Now I'm going to hit enter and up pops the program. This is the server program, okay? And you can see it there. Now listen, uh, I just remembered something. In case you can't see what, you ca in case you can't see what I was typing because of uh, my face image, I moved this window down here just so that you can see what I typed. So P for Python 3, the name of the program, server, localhost, 555. And up pops this um, program. OK, that's done. Now let's move over to the client side. OK, so the, so, so the server is listening at this point. Um, we're, not actually, uh, we're not actually doing anything yet with it, but we need this little client to start up. So let's do that. So this is going to be client. And again, localhost and port 5555. And we run it. OK, so now you see uh, here is the client. It says client right there. And here is the server. So the client should send first. So let's say hello, enter. And notice, now the server gets the hello term. Before, Remember before we had round robin. So th this time, watch, I'm going to type in, I am the client. OK? So this, these, these messages are being sent to the server. Notice that I don't have to do round robin. I can just keep sending messages. OK? It doesn't matter what it is. It just, it'll just keep going there. Now, on the server side, again, um, I can now send messages back to the client. I can say, um, you know, I can 
read your messages. There you go. And so the server now can communicate back. Understand though that the, obviously the server can send another message, you know. And so there's no, there, I mean, there's no um, restrictions in terms of round robin as there was before in the command line program. Uh, and in fact, I mean, I, I can't really do this because I only have one keyboard and one set of hands, but I could, you know, um, type a message in here and type a message in here and, um, you know, hit switch. I, I mean, I can switch quickly to it um, and type other things. But I can switch back here. And uh, so it's not really, uh, I can't really demonstrate simultaneous sending, but it will work. OK? So let's go and take a look at, let's close this. By the way, just to let you know, the client needs to send first in this situation. The server can't send first because the server isn't going to know where to send to. And I'll show you where that is in the code. So let's close these programs. And let's now go to the source code. OK? OK, so here's the source code. And obviously, this is pretty you know, normal. I'm making an input where I can type multi-browser, where the responses are going to be pasted into. Uh, input is when FL enters, so that's when the callback is. Uh, completed. I think that might actually be by default anyway, so I'm not sure if you actually need that line, the when. But this when basically stipulates when the callback to that widget, which is the input widget, will be executed. And I'm also setting the callback function for the uh, input widget where you type, which is called send. And um, I'm grabbing the uh, host from command line argument two and the port from command line argument three. I'm using UDP because I've got DGRAM here. So this is connectionless. So es essentially, every time I send packets, I have to say where they're going. Next thing I do is I say, well, listen, if this is the server, there's going to be one different line, which is the, b the line to bind. Uh, to listen on that port and that host, okay? Or in this case, uh, consider it the which network card, local host or a, or a physical network card. Now here comes the interesting line, okay? Do you remember in the last video we discussed file descriptors? You remember how zero was standard input, two was standard output, three was standard error? Well, guess what? Now this, by the way, when we did this, I bet you this one's going to be three. We can actually, like, we can actually try printing this out just to verify, in fact, that this is this is um, file descriptor three. So, but this it's an integer the operating system uses to reference a socket. Okay, so everything is a file in Unix, and so therefore. Um, we're, we're now finding the communication channel, the file that we can receive data through. Okay, Because notice here, it, we're, it's an S. So self.s is the socket that we created here. So now, what, now this, the, here is the magic line. Okay? This, is what, what I, this is what I call the magic line because it allows us to do asynchronous programming using the FLTK event loop. That's the, that's the magic line. So I think right now we should actually go take a look at the documentation for what FL add FD actually does. Okay, so we're in the FLTK documentation and I went to classes and so here is FL and now let's scroll down to find add FD. There it is. Let's click on it and 
essentially what it says here is, OK, so we're here on add FD. It was the one above. So add FD says adds the file descriptor to listen to when the FD becomes ready for reading. And that's the magic part, when it becomes ready for reading. In other words, when there's data on it, wait will be called. We'll wait will call the callback and then return. The callback is past the FD and the arbitrary void argument. The second version takes a bit field. OK, we're not actually using the second version. Um, so essentially, what this does is it ends up um, watching that file descriptor. And if any data comes in on that file descriptor, then it launches the callback. OK? So let's go back to our uh, code. Notice here. So here is the file descriptor it's going to watch. And here is the function it's going to call if data arrives on that file descriptor. Now that file descriptor, now remember, is actually tied to S, which is the socket. So in other words, now if data arrives on, on, on socket S, this function is going to get called simply from this one magic line 30. OK? Uh, so that's like, it's very simple, very straightforward, and, and it works beautifully. And look at our receive data function. What does it do? We call uh, on S, which is the socket. We go receive from uh, one kilobyte. And hopefully, whatever we're receiving is not bigger than that, because we only call it once. And then, um, now this is important. We're going to get uh, self.address. Okay. Now, why is that important? So we're getting two things. We're getting a tuple from, uh, from s.receive down on here on line 45. But why is that important? Because without self.address, we don't know where to send back to. So yeah, we're getting some information, which is text. And we're going self.brow add. So we're, out, we're adding that text. We're decoding it first and adding it to the browser so it shows up in the list of things that the, our, our uh, counterpart is messaging us with. However, the reason why, now notice text is not um, self.text, because we don't really need it to be uh, an instance level variable. We only need it until the next line. Okay. However, self.address, we need that to, to exist in the class at, as, at the instance level, because we're going to have to access this when we call send. So where is send? The send CB is actually uh, the callback to the input widget. So when we type something in the input widget and hit enter, this function gets executed. And so what does that function do? It gets the text from your input widget, basically like input on the command line. And it says, uh, if this is the server, then, so this is where the other if statement is. Web, depending on, you know, it's different if it's a server versus a client. If it's the server, and in this case, you know, I mean, obviously we're looking at from the perspective of the server, then we're going to send to, we'll encode the text, and now look, this is the key. We're sending it to self.address, which came from here on line 45. So in other words, you cannot send on the server before you receive. Because the, fa the receiving part is what provides you with the address of where you're going to send to. Whereas on the client side, okay, so now we're not the server anymore, uh, this if statement will be false. So we'll come down here to the else statement. And now look where we send to. Ah we send to the command line arguments, host and port. Okay, So in other words, the user of the program determines where the packet goes to. Whereas if we, rece if we received something and it's the server, then 
this variable comes from here. Okay? So that's how the program works. And the nice thing is, is we don't, I mean, just for, you know, basically two if statements, we don't need to duplicate all the code. We can just use a command line argument to specify if it's client or server.